Hello there and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm actually going to be revisiting a topic that I made a video on a long time ago on this channel. Near the beginning of this channel, I made a video on what components a hobbyist maker can salvage from broken or worthless computer parts. I wanted to revisit this idea now, several months later, for the sake of upping the production value and also to add some new opinions on what components I think are good to salvage. Mainly, back when I made that original video, I hadn't worked with SMD components at all. Now, I work with SMD components often and want to talk about that a bit in this video. Additionally, I've got some different parts to take a look at here, including a mini PC, some PCI Express cards, and a server motherboard. Now, before I dig too deep into what I think is worth salvaging from these boards, I'd like to first tell you about today's video sponsor, PCBWay. If you're at all interested in making your own projects with these salvaged electronic components, then you'll almost certainly find PCBWay's high quality custom manufacturing processes interesting. PCBWay offers a wide range of services, some of which include 3D printing in several different materials like nylon, PETG, and even aluminum, as well as CNC milling with, again, many different material options, and of course, custom PCB production and assembly. PCBWay services can bring your next project to another level, Check them out at the link in the video description. Now let's get back to the salvaging at hand. I chose to start by disassembling all of the items that formed full assemblies so that I could then take the parts off their boards in one straight run. But I'll still run through the disassembly of these parts because during this stage, there are some things that can be a good idea to salvage. Here I've got a broken mini PC that I've tried to fix on multiple occasions but just can't get working. Apart from the motherboard assembly, the only other two things here that are worth pulling out and setting aside are the small cooling fan that's intended to cool the system's drives and the Wi-Fi card, which I believe should still be perfectly functional. Moving on to the five and a quarter inch optical drive, some of the parts of this that are really worth pulling out and setting aside are the three motors, one of which is a simple brushed DC motor, with the other two being a BLDC motor and a stepper motor. How useful these other two motors are really depends on what you're doing, but they can be worth saving if you have a project that requires their functionality. However, I would always argue that the standard brushed DC motor is worth saving. Next, I pulled out the two steel rods that the laser head slides on, as well as the laser head itself. These rods can be useful for projects as structural pins, and they can also make good pivots for parts that need to rotate around an axle. We'll work with the laser head a little bit more later, as we can pull some magnets and a laser diode out of it, so we'll just set that aside for now. Then, I moved on to the power supply that I have. Before I get into this one, I have to warn you that the capacitors in these power supplies can hold a dangerous charge for a long time after the power supply was last used. And if you don't know how to deal with this safely, I'd suggest that you don't try to salvage parts from power supplies. From these power supplies, I like to pull out the 80 millimeter fan, the AC socket, and the film capacitor soldered across it if it has one, the main circuit board of course, and if the power supply has one, which this one sadly doesn't, the on off switch. And with that, breaking down all of the components that need to be broken down is done. And we can start talking about what's worth desoldering from the circuit boards that were pulled out and set aside. Starting with the DVD drive, there's really nothing worth salvaging on the circuit boards it has in it. Of course, the DC motor that's attached to a small circuit board is worth desoldering, but really nothing else on these boards is worth the time to desolder unless you have an incredibly specific use case. As for the laser head, you can pull out this little laser diode from it, which can be useful for some projects. Sadly, my camera's recording buffer ran out and I didn't realize it during the disassembly of the laser head itself, but you can basically just remove screws and pry into it until you can break the laser diode and its heatsink out. Additionally, there are some neodymium magnets around the laser lens that you can also salvage, but this time I chose to skip this step because breaking the glue to get them out can be quite an involved effort and I didn't feel like it. Next up was the mini PC's motherboard. The first thing I did was pull off the cooling fan and heatsink and I'll save the cooling fan. However, I'm going to scrap the heatsink because it's just not very useful due to how proprietary its shape is, meaning that I won't really be able to use it to cool any of the parts that my circuits would use. Then I got to desoldering. The first two things that I desoldered are kind of a weird choice of thing to desolder, but I figured it could be fun to pull them off the board and have them on hand in case something pops up. What I'm talking about exactly is the set of two Intel i225V NICs that are on this board. They're kind of cool chips, and I figured they might just be worth salvaging. 
The only other things on this board that I salvaged were the SMD inductors that are riddled all over it. However, if you had projects that could use them, desoldering some of the ethernet ports, USB ports, or the audio jacks could be worthwhile for you. Now for the several PCI Express cards that I have in here. I have three of these old fiber channel cards, which are pretty useless by today's standards, and I really can't be bothered to try and sell them on eBay, so I'm going to be recycling them, but not before I steal some of the SMD inductors that they have on them. Then, from this old graphics card, I pulled a few more inductors. I'd also usually take the heatsink and fan from these, as they can be useful, but this heatsink is actually a really crappy plastic one due to how low power this card is, and so I chose to leave it behind this time. There's usually not too much worth salvaging on these kinds of PCI Express cards though, which really isn't all that surprising. However, one component that always has a ton of parts to steal is the power supply circuit board. On this board, I started by pulling the main filter capacitor, as these capacitors can be useful for some projects due to their high voltage ratings. However, in my case, this capacitor was sadly starting to leak out of its bottom, where one of the legs was, so this will have to be junked. I then moved on to pulling a bunch of other capacitors off of the board, as these units are always loaded with useful value capacitors. I took off the two 1 microfarad film capacitors that are located in the power filtering section, as well as several of the output capacitors that had useful values. Some examples being 2200 microfarad 16 volt capacitors and 1000 microfarad 10 volt capacitors. Then I went on to all of the components that are mounted to the heat sinks in the power supply, as well as the heat sinks themselves. Pretty much every single component that's mounted to these heat sinks can be really useful in projects. Most of the time, these components are full bridge rectifiers, MOSFETs, diodes, and in some extra old power supplies, sometimes you'll find BJTs instead of MOSFETs. I also took a lot of inductors off the power supply board, as these are always worth salvaging. They can be kind of expensive to purchase brand new, especially some of the larger ones. I also pulled a few of the transformers off of this board, which I usually don't do, but I have some project ideas that could possibly make use of them, and so I took them off this time. And this is just a bit of a reminder that exactly what components you find worth salvaging heavily depends on the projects that you are doing. Just because I'm doing certain projects or I'm not doing certain projects doesn't mean you have to take the exact same set of components off that I do. You should take the components that you think you'll actually use. I then took a bit of time to clean up all of the components and heat sinks that I desoldered from the PSU, and once that was done and they were set aside, I moved on to the final bit of hardware that I'll be pulling a few parts off today, the server motherboard. As I mentioned in my previous video on this subject, motherboards are actually oftentimes some of the least lucrative things to scrap. Although they have a ton of components on them, a lot of these components are pretty pointless to salvage, them being basic SMD capacitors and resistors, as well as ICs that don't really have much of a use outside of the specific motherboard. And although this is a server motherboard, it really doesn't differ from a regular PC motherboard in regard to what components are worth taking off of it. Really the only useful components are limited to some capacitors, inductors, CMOS battery sockets, and maybe some of the ports. So for this motherboard, I only ended up removing a couple things these electrolytic capacitors that are located right where the two power supplies plug into the motherboard, and the iDRAC chip. I would have removed the CMOS battery socket if I'd remembered, and I wouldn't be against desoldering some of the inductors for the CPU VRMs, but at the time, I really couldn't be bothered to deal with the hassle of trying to desolder all those. Now, I get that some of you might be wondering why on earth I'd remove the iDRAC chip from this motherboard, because what project am I ever going to use that in? And the honest answer to that is that I don't plan to use it in an electronics project, and instead, I just think it's a kinda cool looking chip, and part of me wants to make it into a keychain. Anyway, I'm finally done desoldering and salvaging all of the things that I deem worthwhile to pull off of these old computer parts. Now all that remains is to sort the components and test them before ultimately putting them away. I like to use one of these inexpensive component testers to test if the components that I pull off these boards are good and also to give me a good idea of what they are. Plus, it's great for measuring things like inductors, which can often be unmarked. And with that, that's my revisitation of the question, what can a maker salvage from old PC parts, with some better production value, and also some new opinions about SMD components and such.
that's all that I have for you in this video. I hope that you were able to at least enjoy it and maybe even learn a thing or two. In any case, I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.